America paused today to honor the men and women who have served in the U.S. military. And more than 25,000 people, including veterans and active duty military personnel, marched along Fifth Avenue in New York. President Trump and the First Lady paid tribute to veterans at a soldier's memorial in New York's Madison Square Park. The president addressed the crowd gathered for the city's 100th Veterans Day parade. He's the first commander in chief to kick off the annual event. The glory of your deeds will only grow greater with time. This city is graced by your presence. This nation is forever in your debt, and we thank you all. President Trump also praised veterans for risking everything for us and said now it's our duty to serve and protect them. During his remarks, the president mentioned the recent U.S. takedown of the leader of ISIS, saying Al al-Baghdadi and his number two are dead. All eyes are now the number three in command. Back here at home, Governor Raimondo hosted the state's Veterans Day ceremony at the Rhode Island Veterans Home in Bristol. Eyewitness News reporter Steve Nielsen was at today's event and shows us how those who served were honored today. Steve? Well, Kim, Mike, as with many Veterans Day ceremonies, it was emotional, poignant, and important. Present. Arm. The colors are presented. Every veteran salutes. And our song, our anthem from the Hope High School Band brings the room of hundreds to silence. This is their day. Veterans, the ones who served. And let's come together unified by our debt of gratitude to our veterans. At the Rhode Island Veterans Home in Bristol, the state's congressional delegation spoke with other state leaders praising the veterans. You've given us a chance to make a more perfect union and we have to seize that chance as a respect to you. Before speaking, Senator Jack Reed shook Charles Fout's hand, a powerful moment of two veterans sharing united appreciation for the other service. So it tells you how great a nation we are, actually. When you get, when you get the news, hey, Congressman, thank you. U.S. Rep Jim Langevin came by to shake the hand of every veteran he could. We are grateful for your service and your sacrifice with no words can adequately convey that appreciation. Then the wreath laying and the salute. Then the most powerful sound of all, a single trumpet. Because the freedoms that we enjoy, the quality of life that we enjoy in this country, uh, that we get to celebrate every single day because we live in America is a direct result of the courage and sacrifice and determination of the men and women who have served our country in uniform. The Rhode Island Veterans Home is state of the art. It opened around two years ago and it cost tens of millions of dollars. Several state leaders pointed to it as a way the state is trying to take care of our veterans. I'm Steve Nielsen, Eyewitness News. Today, two men from the greatest generation were honored for their service during World War II. Eyewitness News reporter Anita Buffoni was at today's ceremony, and she joins us now live in studio with their story. That's new at 5.30. Anita? That's right, Mike and Kim. This was a special ceremony. Family and friends filled the Blue Home in Woonsocket this afternoon to honor 96-year-old Rudy Croft. Croft served as a scout and driver under General George Patton. He was only a teenager when he served in World War II. Also honored at today's ceremony was 97-year-old Armand but, but Boint Rant, excuse me, for his service in the Marines as an av uh, aviator machinist. He was surrounded by members of his family as well. I spoke to both men today. I just having a good time. <laughs> well, they're going to do it without a family, you know? You better be with a friend than uh, somebody you don't know, right? <laughs> Now, both veterans were welcomed by bagpipes and received gifts from dignitaries. Both men, now almost 100 years old, spent time reflecting on their service. They say they are so thankful to be honored on this Veterans Day. I'm Anita Buffoni, Eyewitness News. Among the Veterans Day ceremonies across the area today, there was a wreath laying Veterans Memorial Park in North Kingstown. It's a particularly poignant park since two of the casualties from Operation Iraqi Freedom were from this town and for their families. Today's ceremony even more special as this park just recently escaped becoming a parking lot. Eyewitness News reporter Erica Ritchie explains. And he said to me the one thing he wanted to do was bring all his soldiers home. U.S. Army Captain Matthew August. He was an officer. He could have stayed 
behind. Nope, he was out there in that Humvee with him. Second Lieutenant Matthew Kutu. Both just kids from North Kingstown, not even 30 years old, when they were killed in action in 2004 and 2005, respectively. It was, it was the ultimate sacrifice, and hopefully it wasn't in vain. As, as much as it hurts, I know he died doing what he wanted to do. From the mountains to the prairies. You're not really dead until you're forgotten. And this park opposite Town Hall on Route 1A, where this ceremony was held Monday morning, serves to keep them and all the others who died for freedom alive. But just last week, its fate hung in the balance. A proposed Town Hall expansion project was one of the ballot questions for the special election. Voters had to decide whether to appropriate bond money to make the building larger to house all town offices. Doing so, however, would likely have moved the parking lot to where the Veterans Memorial currently sits, on land deeded to the town for strictly this purpose. More than half of voters turned down the measure. When we make a promise, we have to stand behind that promise. And this park represents a promise made by the town to remember. It really doesn't matter where they are as long as people know what they're there for and they continue to honor the memory of those who served. So for now, this park will remain dedicated to those who have served and protected our country. As for the town hall right across the street, well, that fate now rests back in the hands of the town council. In North Kingstown, I'm Erica Ritchie, Eyewitness News.